bawahnya. Well, hello everybody, it's Danny and Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, it is 7.20 in the afternoon. It is 103 degrees out here right now with a heat index of 107. And this is the only time it's almost dark and we're coming out here. We're going to try with the cub. It's been in the barn now since last spring. It, I'm, I'm, it's horrible. It's all dirty. It's nasty. <laughs> Spiders are all over it everywhere, but we're going to go out here and we're going to try to take the cub and see if the concrete ground we have, if we can plow one row of potatoes, because that's all we can stand this heat, probably just to get one row. And let's just see in this severe drought we've had, if the one row has made any potatoes at all. Now we're going to be using a middle splitter back here behind the tractor that was given to me by a subscriber, and I dearly appreciate that. This will be the year that we try to see if it actually works in this concrete ground we've got here and, and without damaging our potatoes too bad. So we're going to go out here, uh, the grass and everything, we're not even going to try to, I normally would cut and pull vines, all that kind of stuff, I ain't even going to worry about that. I pulled a few for the cows, most of them are dead, so we're just going to see if it'll plow through all of it and, and do it. So let's, guys, the, the grass has died. The weeds are dying. In, in South Mississippi, when weeds die, that is unheard of. But I guess in a little bit of a way, I'm kind of thankful they are dying. But, uh, but anyway, the wind is picking up a little bit here. It always does that right before dark, blows just a little bit. It feels like a hair dryer blowing on you. But we're thankful for what breeze we get. So we're going to run out here, and we're going to see if we can find some taters in this concrete ground we got.
A couple of potatoes came with it, huh? Yeah, there's a couple of them in there with it. I'll make another pass just to be safe. Size taters there. Boy, these things are like they've been in an oven. They're warm, aren't they? They are not warm, they're hot. This made for a speedy harvest. Yeah. Thanks to our subscriber, huh? Yes, thank you so much. One thing about them, they ain't dirty. They're just as clean as they can be. I mean, I want to give all these vines to the cows because that's a part they, they've had a bad summer. Okay. I mean, that's some good sized taters. And it's really way past this the is, number of days. This is a Covington. Okay, Covington. So they did good after all. Are decent for the weather we had, I guess. For the weather we've had, they've done real well. But at least it grew some potatoes. I mean, they almost a five-gallon bucket, a good five-gallon bucket off yes, this road. Yes, they should have been five five-gallon buckets on this road. Yes, but we're thankful for I'm what thankful we have. thankful for what we have. Now, don't get me wrong. Because we didn't expect this. I didn't expect anything, to be honest with you. There's one in that sand right there. Three or four in that sand. <laughs> you got to make another Thank pass. Man, this is just dust. We're at the end of the row, one good five gallon bucket. And you're gonna make another pass, but we need to take some vines to the cows, huh? Yeah. There's taters in them vines, I'm sure. It's heavy, there's taters in there. Dirt. Look, taters, dirt. All of them falling out of it here. This is about 40 pounds of potatoes right here, feels like, in that bucket. Uh, we're going to go get the cub. We're going to make another pass down the same row. Move over just a little bit to see if maybe we might have missed one in all that dust. And this wind feels good, don't it? It feels like a hair dryer blowing on you. But at least it's wind. It's wind. I'm thankful.
turn the gas off on it and let it run out of gas in the carburetor so there's none in the carburetor to go bad. Because uh, I don't ever know how often it's going to be that I use it. Even though I use non-ethanol gas, I still don't like to leave it in the carburetor. I like to run it so it's completely empty. Now, back to the garden and see how many we actually ended up with. All right. Whew. Two five gallon bucket full. Not what we usually get, but we're thankful. In this drought we've had this year, we are thankful. Now, this has got to go to the cow. We don't waste nothing. What little bit, they'll eat it like straw, won't they? Yep. If it's dry. It. It's dry. I know if y'all want something to eat. Woo. Thank the Lord for what little breeze we're getting. It's fixing to be 8 o'clock at night. Clear sky. Clear sky. That's the only problem. Ain't a cloud in the freaking sky. Ain't been no chemtrails. They talk about chemtrails as supposed to be to help keep the heat out. That's a lie because there ain't any chemtrail in the sky nowhere. I mean, it's just crystal blue skies. That's all we ever get every day. Well, well he, under normal conditions, when you have crystal blue skies, you have what's called radiant heating. In other words, the heat escapes into the atmosphere and in the nighttime cools off and you get a good view. What's different about this situation is that we're under what they're calling, new terminology now, they're calling it a heat dome. In other words, what I'm able to find out about it is this dome that's over us doesn't allow the heat to escape into the atmosphere like it does under normal conditions it forces it to the ground and in doing so it eliminates all clouds dew anything like that and you end up with crystal blue skies that's forcing the heat to the ground under extreme conditions now i i don't know is this man-made i don't know uh, i got a sneaky suspicion that it is but there is no relief from it. Usually late in the evening like this, we cool off real quick. And right now we're sweating like it's oh, I'm midday. Right now. I'm, like it's, it's still way over 100 degree heat index out here. The temperature- At eight o'clock. At eight o'clock. Right now I would guess it's probably 97, 98. Slight breeze. Feels like somebody sitting there blowing a hair dryer on you like that. And the only way you get any coolness from it is if you're sweating like we are, the coolness, the wet of your skin, it feels a little cool, but it's really like hot air blowing on you. And guys, it's going to be like this for another six or seven days, they're saying. And we need to get these potatoes out of the ground, but with this heat, I'm thinking seriously, I'll be honest with you, I'm thinking seriously in the morning before the sun ever comes up. I have to run to Pecan Grove to feed my animals. I'm thinking about as soon as I feed them at 5 or 30 in the morning, head straight back over here, get on the cub, plow another row in the dark, and try to get some potatoes picked up before the sun ever crests that sky right there. Because once it crests that sky, the heat is on. Okay, guys, this was our Covingtons that we had planted. This was our worst rows that we had. We have two of them. These were sweet potatoes from Hall's Tool. It's not anything to do with them. It's just under our growing conditions. This was the worst two rows we had. We plowed one. We got two five-gallon buckets off of them. They're approximately 80 feet long, which is not a good harvest, but uh, we're thankful. We got two five-gallon buckets off of one row. Uh, we'll plow one more row of them. That will give us all of our Covingtons, and then we'll have the Beauregards to go and the Georgia Jets. Uh, the Georgia Jets so far from our test digging was our best. 
Uh, the Beauregards was our next to the best, and the Covingtons was our worst. So we wanted to start with our worst harvest to see what we were getting on our worst harvest, and two five-gallon buckets per row on our worst harvest gives us hope that we might have a decent harvest this year if we can get them out before they ruin. Now we do have more sweet potatoes in the front field up yonder. We have Mr. Al potatoes up there. We have our own sweet potatoes up there that we raised for years and supposedly somewhere in the bunch there's some white ones. And we have purple ones at Pecan Grove. We have the Musaki 29s at Pecan Grove to dig yet. So guys we're just kind of hoping and praying for the best out of this heat that we've been under this year. Guys, stay with us, watch, and let's just see what we harvest this year from a sweet potato drought year. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. We got just enough to cover the bottom of a five gallon bucket for rabbit food. This one that kind of selected the sizes out. This here has got a few of the little bacon potatoes against the wall there, but most of them are for making french fries and stuff like that out of stir fry and stuff like that. She kind of separates them out. And these here are the real bigger ones. Uh, we can use these to bake or to can or whatever we end up doing with. We found out that the big ones do better for canning than the little ones do.